So I did something a little bit insane. I signed myself up for a half marathon. Now, before people out there that are runners naturally or have done lots of marathons or 5Ks and 10Ks and stuff like this, this might not sound crazy to you, but it's crazy to me because I've never done one. I mean, I've barely even done like 5K races. I've done, I think, a couple in my life and it wasn't even like something I trained for. It was just kind of like, oh, it's a color run. Oh, it's a, I don't know, mud run. Like, let's do this 5K. And it was, we weren't running the whole time. We weren't really like trying to go all in and like make this a really, I don't know, really make this into something super competitive, I guess. Or like really train for weeks and weeks and weeks beforehand to prepare ourselves for this race. Hey y'all, my name is Landry, also known as Lively Landry. So my husband and I just went out to eat with some friends the other day and the subject of a half marathon got brought up. I don't remember how. And I mentioned that I was interested in running a half marathon at some point in my life. I kind of, you know, had it on my like bucket list and it was on one of my goals. And she was like, well, why don't you just join me and run it with me? And at first I was like, pfft whatever, like I'm not gonna do that. Well, come to find out, it happened to be in the exact place and the exact time that my husband and I already had a, like a plan to go to this area at this same time. And so I was like, well, if I'm there, everything's lining up. I might as well just say yes, like let's just go for it. So I was like, all right, let's do it. I'm gonna hands down, like let's go for it. The next day or a couple of days after, I guess, I ended up registering, I was all in, like I found some training plan like let's go well the second day of running second day of training and I say this because like I said I've never done anything like this before so I'm very new to all of this I'm not a runner to begin with I didn't do long distance run necessarily growing up like I did track but it was like I did hurdles and um, the mile relay like other than that I did not do long distance running anything like that so this is brand new to me so the second day of running I started thinking to myself, what have I done? Like, did I really sign up for this? Like, is it too late to go back? Can I like just unregister myself, tell them, you know, I can't do this. I'm not about it. Like, this is just not for me. I'm not meant to run and blah, 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 blah. My legs were already feeling really sore, feeling really heavy. Like I've never used my legs in this way. Even though it was only the second day of training and running, I'm not even running that much yet. My body's just not used to running because I'm not a runner. And so I was ready to give up until I was reminded of the verse Hebrews 12 1 through 2. I'm going to read it to you now and it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne. Wow, that is amazing. And there's a lot in that verse that you could unpack. It doesn't necessarily have to be for a particular situation where you're actually running or you're running a race. It's just talking about the race that's set before you as in our lives, the purpose that God has put before you, the calling, the assignment that he has put before you. That's what it's talking about. That's what it's calling you to do is to run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. So when I was reminded of this verse, I suddenly thought, wait a second, I am perfectly capable of doing this. Yeah, it's the second day. Yes, I'm already tired. I'm dying. I don't feel prepared at all. Like I am not a runner. I'm not equipped. I don't even have the right shoes. Like I could probably run in these shoes, but if we're being honest, there's not a lot of support and these shoes are not made to run in. But who cares? At this point, like if it gets to a point where I need new shoes, then I'll get new shoes. If it gets to a point where I need to figure out something else, I'll figure out something else. 
but right now I'm gonna run with perseverance the race that is marked out before me. Another thing that I was reminded of when I read this verse was that let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What's really cool about this verse is, yes, it's talking about running the race with perseverance marked out before you, but you're not running the race to achieve and grab something at the very end, as in physical. I'm not running this race to get the gold medal. I'm not training for the Olympics. I'm not training to be the best of the best. I'm just training because this is something I've always wanted to do and I've always wanted to kind of push myself to do and run this race even though it sounds crazy and I only have less than eight weeks to prepare for this and I'm not a runner. I'm not running for the gold, the physical, tangible thing that I can touch at the very end. I'm running because I know that my body was created to move by my creator. I'm running to show myself mentally and spiritually that I am capable of going after hard things. I am fully equipped to go after and run a race that I've never done before, that I have no idea how it's going to turn out. I have no talent. I have no preparation or proper equipment to actually do this thing, but I'm capable of doing it because I'm fixing my my eyes on Jesus. So I'm currently reading through the Bible in a year, like doing a Bible in a year reading plan. And cu currently I'm in Joshua. And just the other day I read Joshua 1 9. If you don't know what Joshua 1 9 says, it says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And what's really interesting is I've heard this verse. You may have heard this verse too. Maybe it's on a cute wallpaper. Maybe it's on a cute little frame. Maybe you've just heard people say, be strong and courageous, blah, 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 blah. Like the Lord will be with you wherever you go. But what's really cool is when you look at these verses like this and you put them into context, right here, God is telling Joshua, have I not commanded you? As in, have I not chose you? Have I not picked you out to be the one to follow in Moses's footsteps? Have I not been the one that did that? I need you to be strong and I need you to be courageous because I have called you to be in this position. I have called you to lead the Israelites into the promised land and keep going and be the leader for them here on earth. Don't be terrified. Don't be discouraged because I am with you wherever you go. You are going to face giants. You are going to come up to people that are much bigger than you. Their armies are greater than yours. But have I not commanded you? I'm going to be with you wherever you go and you will be fully equipped to run this race to go and do the things that I have commanded you and called you to do. Joshua was probably terrified and scared out of his mind because he's following in the footsteps of a really awesome dude. I mean, he is taking the footsteps. He's putting on the shoes of Moses that was before him. Moses, the guy who faced Pharaoh forever, what seemed like over and over and over, trying to tell him, let my people go, release the Israelites, or my God will do this, or blah, 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 blah. And those things happened over and over and over. And Moses could have easily just given up. And then he finally got them out and they, he parted the waters. Like God did all of these amazing miracles to help them escape and keep going. Yet the Israelites time and time again, when I was reading this, I was like, oh my gosh, they're so dumb. They just saw all of these miracles all in within Egypt. And then they still are over here complaining, saying we should just go back to Egypt. We're far better in Egypt. At least we had food. At least we had, you know, a place to live. We had a roof over our heads. They're complaining about all this, but they were enslaved in Egypt. They were beaten and all kinds of stuff was happening to them in Egypt. Yet they wanted to go back to that just because they weren't seeing something exactly happening with God, or they couldn't see in the future and understand that God was going to give them this promised land. God was going to lead them to this land that it was going to be theirs and be the kingdom of God for the rest of their lives. 
We do this every single day. We do this over and over and over. God does something amazing in our lives, or he answers a prayer, or he gives us some kind of confidence or desire that makes us believe that, oh, you know what? God is on my side. God is with me. God is leading me in this particular situation or circumstance. You know what? I can do this. And then one little thing happens, and we're like, well, pfft. Never mind. I can't do this anymore. I'm a failure. You know, God's not giving me any information right now. He's not talking to me. He's not blessing me. He's not guiding me. I'm reading his word, but yet I'm not getting anything out of it. You know, this story of Joshua relates to me in no way, no how. So I'm just going to give up and I'm just going to do it on my own. I'm just going to figure this out. I'll take care of it. I'll just go back to, you know, being who I need to be based on what I know about myself and based on what the world is telling me. And when we do that, fall back into that slavery. We fall back into that bondage of being tempted by sin and the enemy and being held captive by that every single time. So my encouragement for you here today is that if you are facing something right now that looks extremely scary, or you're facing something right now where you have absolutely no idea what to do, you don't feel like you have the equipment, you don't feel like you have all the right tools and resources to be able to run this race or do this thing that is set before you, you are completely equipped because of this right here, because of God's word right here. This is how we connect with God. This is how we know who God is. And because when we know who God is, we are able to run the race with perseverance that's marked out before us. We're able to fix our eyes on Jesus and remember that his time here on earth was terrifying. He faced death right in the eye and he could have easily stepped away and said, you know what? That's too scary. You know what? These people aren't worth it. You know what? These people are still, you know, telling me no. They're still abusing me. They're still mocking me. They're still going behind my back, you know, all these things. And he could have easily just walked the other way and said, you know, I'm not going to do it. It's too hard. I can't do it. I'm not equipped. But thankfully, because of Jesus, who he was, he looked death right in the eye and said, bring it on. Let's do this. And he went straight to the cross. He was abused. He was mocked. He was beaten. And he was killed. Went in the grave and rose again because of the power of God. So I, my prayer for you is that you can take my little scary scenario of running a half marathon or getting prepared to run a half marathon and look it straight in the face and say, bring it on. Let's do this. I'm fully equipped. I am fully capable because of my Lord and Savior, because of his word that I am able to open up and dig in and gain confidence and strength and power and a desire for God every single day. So I'm going to face it. I'm going to run this race with perseverance. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help my channel. And if you want to see more, I am actually going to be kind of taking you along my journey of running this race with perseverance and training for this half marathon. So if you would like to see more and continue hearing my story or continue hearing more on how this plays out, please hit that subscribe button and then click that notification bell so you don't miss the next time I upload a video. You are fully equipped, my friend. I love you and I'll see you next time.